injury problems which kept her a little uh, compromised, we say, at Eugene, where she took a bronze in the 100 metres and a silver in the 4x100 for Jamaica. Misha Liai of Trinidad and Tobago in this one as well, Zoe Hobbs as well from New Zealand, Abrams of Guyana and England's Asha Phillip. Well, let's take a look at these athletes. There is Joy Udo Gabriel of Nigeria, third in her heat in 11.43. That was a season's best. She's an 11.3 athlete at her best. Remember, it is only the first two who go through by right. There is Seone Sibeli of Botswana, third in her heat as well in 11.52. Last night, the 28-year-old, a long way off her personal best, Na Anang of Australia. Well, she's a, a long jump specialist normally. She's a 6.81 long jumper, second in the heat yesterday in 11.37. She's in three. And then Thompson Hera, Elaine Thompson Hera of Jamaica, double Olympic champion last year at 100 and 200, storming to gold in Tokyo. Won a heat in 10.99 yesterday. She's still in very fine form indeed. Misha Lee Aie, well, she's the defending champion. She goes in lane five, the athlete from Trinidad and Tobago. Semi-finalist in Tokyo last year over 100 metres, won a heat in 11.14. There's Zoe Hobb, she goes in lane six. The semi-finalist in the World Championships just a couple of weeks back in Eugene, the Kiwi. 11.09 in her heat. Jasmine Abrams of Guyana. Went out in the heats of the Olympics last year in Tokyo, she's been one stage better here. She is an 11.07 athlete and that was this year, which was much slower in her heat yesterday. And Asha Phillip of England, listen to that, so welcome. European indoor champion back in 2017, over 60 metres. She was fourth, Asha Philip, in 2018 at the Commonwealth Games. Great athlete on her day. Here, she was third in her heat in 11.27, a season's best. So, improving, Asha Philip, her lifetime best, 11.10. Well, Lane Thompson here up. Back and shoulder problems have kept her at bay. Coach by Stephen Francis, who coached the great Asafa Powell just a, a few years back. She is the second fastest athlete in history. If you want some idea of her pedigree, as if uh, being double Olympic champion isn't enough. She is a quite fabulous athlete. Will we see her here take the gloves off a little more than yesterday when she ran 10.99 to win her heat? Thompson here, standing favourite in four there in the yellow of Jamaica in the centre. Going well at the moment. It's going well in one, Zuda Gabriel, but uh, Thompson here moving away here. Great run from Zoe Hobbs of New Zealand to snatch second place there. Misha Lee Aye. About a metre and a half behind the Kiwi. That was a very, very out of sorts run from the Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago athlete. 11 05 there for Thompson Hero. Well, it still leaves a few questions unanswered. What was the wind doing there? Just waiting to see. Zero wind. And 11 05. I think she might be a little bit disappointed with that. The temperature has dropped a fair bit over the last couple of hours. It's not really a warm evening any longer quarter to eight here in Birmingham but what a run from Zoe Hobbs 11.05 for Thomas Nahira 11.15 for the Kiwi who has booked her place in the final brilliant run by Zoe Hobbs for second she's third from the left hand side as we look at it here Michelle Liai was always going to come under pressure with Hira to her left and I think that was an excellent, excellent run by the New Zealander who stormed to a new national record in the heats in Eugene en route to the semi-finals. Thompson Hera, I think, kept her powder dry there. She did what she needed to do just off the podium in the 200 on the Gold Coast. I think it's a brilliant affirmation of what the Commonwealth Games means to her that a four-time individual reigning Olympic champion has chosen to come here because she's desperate to add the Commonwealth crown to all those Olympic titles. She's into the final and looked very impressive. Yes, it wasn't as fast and perhaps not quite as effortless looking as the heat team, but then the pressure's on. They've got to deliver in the semis. She did, and she's got the chance to run again in the big showdown. I'm just thinking, Rob, that we would normally expect, I know she eases off a long way out there, but we'd normally expect Thompson the hair up if everything's good and in still air to be going down there well below 11 seconds. And, you know, she marginally beats uh, Zoe Hobbs there by about half, three quarters of a metre. Nothing wrong, no indications of injury or anything, but she didn't look all smiles and delighted with herself as she was walking away after the race. And I still think there's a question mark there. I don't know what you think, Kath Mary. I think she looked pretty easy, to be honest. But she's one of those athletes, Tim, isn't she, that she's sometimes very hard to read. I was just watching her balance. You mentioned the problems that she's had. She's had Achilles problems, a bit of shoulder issues as well. So, yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting from the reigning champion.
Her lifetime best is 43 metres and 93. Understandably, she's excited and awaiting the distance. Back into the lead, as I say, but what has she done here in the penultimate event? She punches the air and it's coming through and my system 44 meters and 33 a lifetime best for johnson thompson now a little bit more comfortably back in the lead grace then the australian 37.59 on her first throw it's going to be very similar in distance for the australian athlete a reminder she was in the bronze medal position at the start of this javelin element, but there've been big throws from Kate O'Connor. She had a no throw in the second round. She was the early leader yesterday, wasn't she, after the hurdles? 37 meters and 95, a slight improvement. And that women's heptathlon, the crowd erupted when Katarina Johnson-Thompson threw that lifetime best. Throwing not the strongest for the former world champion. But what a time to pull out a lifetime best performance just when needed. And the key with her is looking like she's enjoying it. And she has had a great two days. I wonder if Julianne Alfred will be saying the same at the end of this evening. She is the fourth fastest in the world this year and was so disappointed the St. Lucian to be disqualified in the semi-finals at the World Championships a couple of weeks ago. From the men's semis over 100 metres to the women's. Blistering qualification in heats. Elaine Thompson here at the Olympic champion floated down the track to 10.99. So too did Nwoa Oko Ocha, who goes in the first of the semis for Nigeria exactly the same time. I wonder whether she could challenge her compatriot Okabare's games record. We shall see. Really good quality lineup here. Absolutely packed at Alexander Stadium. So much great action to come. So here's a confirmation of how they line up. Julian Alfred of uh, St. Lucia goes in three. One of the fastest women in the world this year. But Nwoa Okoocha of Nigeria in six, looked magnificent in qualification yesterday. Watch for Joella Lloyd as well in seven. The Antiguan PB and national record in the semi-finals of the NCAAs. Great final in prospect. Who is going to get there? Imani Lansico of England will get a great cheer in five. She's had an excellent season just off the podium in the World Juniors a few years ago. So here we go, what a magnificent view of the eight women. The first of three semi-finals. So, Hannah Bryant made the final of the World Youth and the World Juniors, fourth in heat four. Welsh woman's done brilliantly to come through from that inside lane. I wonder whether she'll take inspiration from Jeremiah Azu. Veronica Pereira, a national record in the heats. Could she go again here in the semis? Now, Julian Alfred disqualified in the semis at the World Champs, needs to maintain her focus. Massive PBs, down from 11.07 to 10.81 this season. Odebile to show up. A World Youth semi-finalist, didn't finish the African final in Mauritius, will hope to go better here. And listen to the cheer for Romani Lansico. Third in the national championship, she's developing into a brilliant, brilliant sprinter. So good to watch when she's in full flow. As is the woman in the lane next to her, Grace Nwoa Okoocha. 10.99 in qualification, and it looked utterly effortless, but the stakes have risen. This is the semis, not the heats. Joella Lloyd looked good as well in qualification. She's had a PB in a national record this year. Semi-finalist in Eugene over the 200 metres. And Ramona Birchall of Jamaica, world indoor finalist a few years ago. So look for an explosive start from her. She was second in heat seven with 11.46, and we'll need to go quicker here. So, Briar, Wales in one, Pereira, Singapore in two, Alfred, St. Lucia, one of the fastest women in the world this year in three, Toshoa, Botswana, four, Lansico, England in five, Nwoa, Okoocha, Nigeria in six, Lloyd, Antigua, seven, Birchall, Jamaica in lane eight.
I've got a funny feeling this women's 100 meter final later on this evening could provide something very, very special indeed. Let's see what Anwoa Oka Ocha has for us here in lane six and Alfred of St. Lucia in three. Top two coming back for what promises to be a blistering final. Third. A big roar from the crowd. Lansipo got away well on the far side. Alfred and she's pulling away from the Nigerian. This is better from Julian Alfred. Alfred and Amor Oka Ocha take the two spots. 11-0-3, a little bit tighter this time by the Nigerian who came through for second because she was put under pressure out of her peripheral vision by Julian Alfred, who once she got into her running was unstoppable. Lantico will have to wait to see whether she can get in the mix for one of those non-automatic spots. But that's more like it by the St. Lucian. Massive moment for her after her disappointment at the World Champs. And Woa Oka Ocha will be back for the final. Lansico will have to wait and see in third. And here's the replay. And Alfred in lane number three got out well. Had a good dry phase there and then stood up nice and tall. Should have been fully aware of the athletes outside her, including the English athlete Lansico and the Nigerian closing down. But now we're seeing the athletes in these semi-finals with their foot on the gas. And when you have the disappointment that Alfred had at the World Championships recently, as Rob said, with that DQ in the semi-final, you get a little bit of extra fire in your belly to prove what you are all about. And let's not forget, 10.81 seconds this year, and she's into the final comfortably. Good running there by Julien Alfred. And Woa Oka Ocha, not quite the fireworks we saw in the heats. Amani Lansico might have a chance at 11-1-8, although she faces an anxious wait with the other two semi-finals still to come. Great run there by the St. Lucian. So back in the javelin heptathlon, Jade O'Dowda. 42-15 was her first throw for the English athlete. So it's going to be no improvement. And that silver medal position before this javelin element began. And we've had some really big throws so far. A personal best from Katarina Johnson-Thompson. No improvement, 33-62. Holly Mills then. Mentally rehearsing, going through her last attempt here. 38-63 in round number two. Close to the podium here in her first major senior outdoor heptathlon competition. Well, Pierce is the grass here at Alexander Stadium, shy of the 40-metre line. It's going to be close to her second round effort. She's going to pick up about... 640, 650 points in this event is Holly Mills. She was in the silver medal position after a 13.52 hurdles yesterday. 38 metres and 25, just shy of her second round effort. Kate O'Connor from Northern Ireland. 50 metres and 83 in the first round. Really turning up here in a discipline that she is very, very good at. And she picked up huge points. She's in the personal best of Johnson Thompson. O'Connor then with her last throw before the 800 meter element. Well, that's a nice release. Oh! Over the 50 meter line again. I think that's a slight improvement on her first round throw. AJT is throwing well, much to the frustration of O'Connor, who opened with that huge near 51 metre throw. So she awaits the distance. 51 metres and 14, another improvement for the athlete from Northern Ireland. 
So the result of that javelin throw, Kate O'Connor, 51-14, 882 points. Johnson Thompson, 751 points for a lifetime best of 44-33. And Jade O'Dowda in the bronze medal position, still now just ahead of Holly Mills. And those numbers will be crunched. We look at the gorgeous skyline of Birmingham city centre and here are your standings after six events. Johnson Thompson, 136 points ahead of Northern Ireland's Kate O'Connor. Jade O'Dowder from England currently in bronze. All to play for, the 800 metres to come later. Two semi-finals to come in the men's 100 metres. This is the second of the three. We know two athletes who have made it through to the women's 100 final. And there is the line of Uda Gabriel, Sibele, Anang thompson Hera of Jamaica goes in lane four, coming back from uh, injury problems, which kept her a little uh, compromised, we say, at Eugene, where she took a bronze in the 100 metres and a silver in the 4 by 100 for Jamaica. Misha Liai of Trinidad and Tobago in this one as well. Zoe Hobbs as well from New Zealand. Abrams of Guyana and England's Asha Phillip. Well, let's take a look at these athletes. There is Joy Udo Gabriel of Nigeria. Third in her heat in 11.43. That was a season's best. She's an 11.3 athlete at her best. Remember, it is only the first two who go through by right. There is Seone Sibeli of Botswana. Third in her heat as well in 11.52. Last night, the 28-year-old, a long way off her personal best, Na Anang of Australia. Well, she's a, a long jump specialist normally. She's a 6.81 long jumper, second in the heat yesterday in 11.37. She's in three. And then Thompson Hera, Elaine Thompson Hera of Jamaica, double Olympic champion last year at 100 and 200, storming to gold in Tokyo. Won a heat in 10.99 yesterday. She's still in very fine form indeed. Misha Lee Aie, well, she's the defending champion. She goes in lane five, the athlete from Trinidad and Tobago. Semi-finalist in Tokyo last year over 100 metres. Won a heat in 11.14. There's Zoe Hobbs, she goes in lane six. The semi-finalist in the World Championships just a couple of weeks back in Eugene, the Kiwi. 11.09 in her heat. Jasmine Abrams of Guyana. Went out in the heats of the Olympics last year in Tokyo. She's been one stage better here. She is an 11.07 athlete, and that was this year, which was much slower in her heat yesterday. And Asha Philip of England, listen to that, so welcome. European indoor champion back in 2017, over 60 metres. She was fourth, Asha Philip, in 2018 at the Commonwealth Games. Great athlete on her day. Here, she was third in her heat in 11.27, a season's best. So... Improving Asha Phillip, her lifetime best 11 1 0. Well, Lane Thompson here up, back and shoulder problems have kept her at bay. Coach by Stephen Francis, who coached the great Asafa Powell just a, a few years back. She is the second fastest athlete in history. If you want some idea of her pedigree, as if uh, being double Olympic champion isn't enough, she is a quite fabulous athlete. Will we see her here? Take the gloves off a little more than yesterday when she ran 10.99 so. to win her heat. Thompson here up. Standing favourite in four there in the yellow of Jamaica in the centre. Going well at the moment. It's going well in one Zuda Gabriel, but uh, Tim Hera moving away here. Great run from Zoe Hobbs of New Zealand to snatch second place there. Misha Lee Aye about a metre and a half behind the Kiwi. That was a very, very out of sorts run from the Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago athlete. 11 0 5 there for Thompson Hero, but it still leaves a few questions unanswered. What was the wind doing there? Just waiting to see. Zero wind. And 11.05, I think she might be a little bit disappointed with that. The temperature has dropped a fair bit over the last couple of hours. It's not really a warm evening any longer. Quarter to eight here in Birmingham. But what a run from Zoe Hobbs. 11.05 for Thomas Nahira, 11.15 for the Kiwi, who has booked her place in the final. Brilliant run by Zoe Hobbs for second. She's third from the left-hand side as we look at it here. Michelle Liai was always going to come under pressure with Hira to her left and I think that was an excellent excellent run by the New Zealander who stormed to a new national record in the heats in Eugene en route to the semi-finals Thompson Hera I think kept her powder dry there she did what she needed to do just off the podium in the 200 on the Gold Coast 
I think it's a brilliant affirmation of what the Commonwealth Games means to her that a four-time individual reigning Olympic champion has chosen to come here because she's desperate to add the Commonwealth crown to all those Olympic titles. She's into the final and looked very impressive. Yes, it wasn't as fast and perhaps not quite as effortless looking as the heat team, but then the pressure's on. They've got to deliver in the semis. She did, and she's got the chance to run again in the big showdown. I'm just thinking, Rob, that we would normally expect, I know she eases off a long way out there, but we'd normally expect Thompson to hair up if everything's good and in still air to be going down there well below 11 seconds. And, you know, she marginally beats uh, Zoe Hobbs there by about half, three quarters of a metre. Nothing wrong, no indications of injury or anything, but she didn't look all smiles and delighted with herself as she was walking away after the race. And I still think there's a question mark there. I don't know what you think, Kath Mary. I think she looked pretty easy, to be honest. But she's one of those athletes, Tim, isn't she, that she's sometimes very hard to read. I was just watching her balance. You mentioned the problems that she's had. She's had Achilles problems, a bit of shoulder issues as well. So, yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting. We'll see what she's got in a couple of hours' time. It is 11.05 for Lane Thompson here. Zoe Hobbs going through. That's a real bonus for the Kiwi squad. Second place for her. She's into the final. Misha Liaye with 11.29 also goes through.